you see that? It's like I'm a real ninja. But today we are talking about churrascaria style picanha. And I'm going to teach you everything there is to know about it. Check it out. For today's cook, we're going to be cooking these two beautiful picanhas, two different methods. The first one, we're going to be making steaks out of it. And the second one, churrascaria style, which is with the skewers. I'm going to show you the exact method so that you have perfect results every time. So let's do it. When cutting picanha in steaks, it is important to cut it with the grain so your final cut is against the grain. And the same goes with the skewer as well. The final cut must always be against the grain. You can clearly see the direction of the grain on this one and it is very important to follow. For the first picanha, we're going to be cutting it with the grain as we're making steaks out of it. Now the thickness is important. I recommend about an inch to an inch and a half. And that could be either cooked on the grill or also sous vide. I don't think picanha tastes better any thicker than that. To understand it a little farther, as you can see, I'm cutting exactly with the grain. And once it's completely cooked in the end, I'll be cutting it against the grain. I am going to sacrifice this picanha so you can actually see exactly what I mean. Check it out. As you can see, this one here is almost falling apart already, as the fibers are extremely small. And if I pull it apart, it will just completely rip apart. That's the reason we cut steaks with the grain. For the second picanha, we're going to be cooking it churrascaria style with the skewers. As you can see, this one came with a fat cap already ripped. Yeah, I was really disappointed, but hey, it's not a big deal. It does happen sometimes. We can clearly see that the fibers are going this direction. Remember, all that it matters is the final cut. So for skewers and skewers only, you want to rotate it and cut it against the grain. I would recommend cutting three fingers thick so you can shave it off as you're cooking it. Now these skewers won't be perfect because of this fat cap missing, but that's fine. So let's move on. Check it out. Now that I cut it against the grain, this might be recognized to you if you've ever been to the Brazilian churrascaria. Now what will happen is the final cut, we're going to be slicing it this direction and it will be against the grain. As you can see here, the fibers are already splitting. They automatically want to come apart. This lets you know that you're doing the right way. So again, I repeat, for skewers, cut it against the grain so your final cut will also be against the grain. Just like my last picanha, I am going to slice a little piece so you can see exactly what I mean. As you can see, this picanha was cut properly and the fibers are extremely small. And if I pull them apart, they just disintegrate. Check this out. And this is uncooked. Imagine cooked. It will melt in your mouth. And it's raw, everybody. It is raw. And that is how you cut picanha properly for skewers. Now let's talk a little bit about skewers. There's a lot of options. Here's the first one. I like to call this one the Russian style. And the reason is when I bought it, it said Russian. <laughs> now I really like this one because as you can see right here in the end, it has a twist. And it allows you to hold it in any directions when you're cooking it. This is a more traditional Brazilian style one. It is sharp and it holds the meat very, very well. In most churrascaria in Brazil, this is the one that they're using if they don't have an automatic rotisserie. Now for the next one, this one, you really don't want to use it with picanha. And I'll explain to you why. It'll just slide off. Now I recommend this skewer here more for like ground beef or shawarma, but not for picanha. And you will see me doing those things very, very soon on the channel. Now this one here, we use it in Brazil a lot, quite a bit as a matter of fact. In Brazil, it's not very popular to have a Weber or a cooker like we do here in the United States. So when we're cooking steaks, we actually cook it directly on the skewer. And if you ever want to see me cook a steak, not a churrascaria style, a steak style on this type of skewer, just let me know in the comments below and I'll show it to you guys how it works. And it works fantastic. Now for the last and final one that I'm going to be showing to you today is the Rolls Royce of skewers. This is the best of the best. It is an automatic skewer which is operated by batteries. And here is where you would put the battery. Now you might be thinking, oh, it's not that strong. I could tell you I've cooked a 15 pounds turkey with it. And let me tell you, it rotated beautifully. And if you ever want to see a cook on it, just comment down below and I'll make it happen. Now let me show you the best method to put it on the skewer. We are going to start with the smallest piece. Do not handle it in your hand as you could poke your hand. 
So go through it like if you were cutting the cutting board and then do a twist and carefully finish it off on the cutting board once again. Let me show it to you one more time on this bigger piece. Pushing down, go through with a cutting board, twist, keep your fingers away and push it through. Simple and easy. And there we have it, the picanha is ready to be cooked, churrascaria style. I'm going to be keeping them traditional and seasoning them with salt and nothing else. Now that we have these beautiful picanhas ready, it is time to cook them. One, I am going to be reverse searing it, and the second one, churrascaria style. With the churrascaria style, you want it to almost sear it, the outside, and shave it off as you cook. But enough talking, it is time to cook them up, so let's do it. Are you ready to try, Angel? Yeah. I know what you guys are thinking. We had a lot of picanha and we only have this left right now. That's because today is a weekday. All the family already had it and we have yeah. the leftovers, Angel. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> That's how that works. I'm just joking. And the other one that I cooked on the skier is still going and we're going to slice it up. But the steaks, the family took it already. All right, Angel. They really did. So I want to know which one you like better. Which one is your, your favorite? Let's go ahead and try the skewered ones. Okay. Perfectly medium rare. That's the good thing about skewers. That's why they do it on the Brazilian's barbecue place. If you want a medium rare, they cook a medium rare. If you want it well done, they'll cook it well done. Cheers, buddy. It's the queen, everybody. It's always amazing. It's amazing, bro. I, I love it. It's picanha, man. Picanha is always going to be good. You just got to cook it right. You got to cut it correctly. Yeah, man. I went... I went. I told you, but they should know. Wow. I went to a steakhouse. Oh yeah, the story. <laughs> Go I went ahead, to a tell steakhouse them. with my friends, and it just didn't come out good, man. They finally came around with the picanha, and I'm like, oh yeah, give me a load of, uh, like, give me a bunch. Hey, yeah, they cut and it, was it tough. up. So hard, I I didn't even swallow it. I couldn't. If you ever went to a Brazilian steakhouse and you had picanha, and picanha was tough, everybody, it's because they're giving you the bad part of the picanha which is the cochon duro, which oh, is the thickest part. they definitely gave me the cochon duro. Definitely. So, you know, that's something for you to remember. Keep that in mind. All right, Andrew, we tried that one. Let's try the steaks, the traditional, and the way that I definitely recommend that everybody, I definitely recommend the steaks a lot better than the skewers. Trust me, even professionals in Brazil that only do barbecue, they'll let you know that the best way to have picanha is with steaks, not with skewers. Skewers is more for like show. Cheers, yeah. buddy. Angel, out of the two steaks, we have the skewers and we have the steaks. Which one do you prefer? Yeah, it's definitely gonna go over to the steaks this time. The steaks, guys, is a lot better and it is the way that is recommended. In a Brazilian churrascaria, here in the United States, we only have skewers. But a professional churrascaria in Brazil, the uh, Marco Bassis, which is the founder almost of picanha and really made picanha known in Brazil. Anyway, it's a long history. He always tells everybody the proper way to cook a picanha is with steaks, not with skewers. Skewers is just for show. 
So I definitely recommend you trying out steaks. Agree? Yeah. Don't get me wrong though, this is still good. Yeah, it's awesome. It's still good, <laughs> it's not bad, but at the same time, if you wanna have the best experience with your picanha, make those steaks. Now you know how to cut it. If you wanna do it either way, just do it. If you're having picanha on a restaurant, everybody, and it is not good, something is not right, all right? Something is not right. Here's another tip. When you go to a churrascaria, always ask your waiter to cut it really thin for you. A lot of times they won't do that because they wanna go to many tables as much as possible. So they'll give you a really thick one. Yeah. So ask them always, cut it really thin for me. You will have a much better experience. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do enjoy it, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, be sure to subscribe for future videos. And remember, if you're interested in anything I use, everything is in the description down below. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you guys on the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.